Hello friends, it's me, Tom Gray, the internet's most determined white guy with a beard cosplayer. How are you? Great. I am doing well, thank you for asking. What happens when you combine the hot girl from Transformers with the rapper that got wrecked so hard by Eminem he had to change genres to singing about kissing girls under the bleachers of a high school football game? That's right, the most cringeworthy thing I've read in a long time. But for some reason, they and a lot of media are trying to convince us that it's very relatable and also very cool. I mean, who doesn't love celebrity relationships? A lot of people actually, and I'm included in that, but this relationship is different. I usually wouldn't care, but I saw a tweet by GQ UK. Oi, governor, it's British. I can't do accents. Oi, governor, what day is it? It's Christmas day. I can't do accents, dude. But I saw this tweet and it was so annoying and cringeworthy. I hated it, but I have this thing in my head where if I hate something, my brain for some reason is just like, yes. Give me more. I want to hate more. I need it. First of all, let's just talk about the cover photo for this. It's actually insane. Why is she pointing a gun at his dick? I'm from the Midwest, baby. I know a lot about gun safety. Rule number one, do not point it at Machine Gun Kelly's penis. It also looks like a woke Hollywood remake of a Bonnie and Clyde movie, except that Bonnie and Clyde are lesbians in this one. Why did I sound like a reactionary Republican talking head when I made that joke? I don't know, but it makes me laugh. Back to the meat and potatoes of the article. And I quote, I just remember this tall, blonde, ghastly creature. And I was like, you smell like weed. He looked down at me and he was like, I am weed. Then he disappeared like a ninja in a smoke bomb. <laughs> I swear, I thought this article was satire when I first saw it. Like I thought they were just taking the piss out of them. My man really said, I am weed. And the worst part is it fucking worked. Dude, it worked. If I knew that's all it took to get a date with Megan Fox, I would have made weed my entire personality. Like those 30 year old dudes that smoke weed for the first time and then they're like, that's it. I'm the weed guy now, <laughs> Joe Rogan. <possible. laughs> I actually really do like that pickup line though. You can use it for just about anything. You smell like hot dog water. I am hot dog water. You smell like literal dog shit. I am dog shit. You smell like Versace Eros for men. I am Versace Eros for men. I'm literally a fucking bottle of cologne. And after that one line, I was like, there's no way this article could get any worse, but just like life, it always gets worse. Even our first kiss, she wouldn't kiss me. We just put our lips right in front of each other and breathed each other's breath, and then she just left. That just seems awkward, sitting there like mouth to mouth with each other, like, is this doing anything for you? No. It's not doing anything for me. The only way this would do something is if I needed CPR. I mean, it legitimately sounds like something a middle schooler would think is so hot until they realize that everything they did from the age of 10 to 18 is so embarrassing that it wakes them up in the middle of the night and they can't go back to sleep because they're just thinking about that one stupid mistake they made over and over and over again. And I'm speaking from experience, if you couldn't tell. If, if you don't have memories from middle school and high school that haunt you to this day, you are not doing life right. I jerked off in the parking lot of a Narcotics Anonymous meeting. I have a lot of shit that haunts me. It also reminds me of that classic, is this allowed, Vine? What the fuck? Is this allowed? What the fuck? Is that allowed? But instead of it being like young kids embarrassing themselves on the internet, it's 30 year old adults embarrassing themselves on the internet. Because you've been around the world and experienced so much shit, you think you know everything and then you are in the arms of your destiny and realize, I don't know shit yet. Look, I'm not hoping for them to break up or anything like that. I'm glad they're happy, do you? But if they did break up two months after this article came out, this would be classic literature. This is so funny. It's ecstasy and agony. I don't want people to think anything's perfect with us. I didn't say it was the darkest fairy tale for no reason. There's also a demonic side. What the fuck is this? Is this lyrics from a lost My Chemical Romance album? This is something I would have written down in a journal when I was in middle school thinking about the girl that I had a huge crush on but she didn't even know I existed. Just like, Dear Diary, I thought she was waving at me, but she was waving at someone else. Perhaps this is the beginning of our love story. <sighs> Fox and MGK are in love with a capital L. While they are both famous sex symbols, they act like kids together. I understand that Megan Fox is 100% a sex symbol, that's not wrong, but is MGK really a sex symbol? I mean, he's more likely to be a registered sex offender than he is a sex symbol. 
Are you I'm finding down, her. Are you counting down the days until she's 18? I'm not waiting until she's 18. I'll go now. I'm 23, dog. Like, I'm not like a creepy age. You know I had to put those clips in the video. You have to if you're talking about MGK. He sent her a couple of text messages. One that said, I am weed. Dude, please stop with the I am weed bullshit. Please stop. It hurts every time I read it. Stop it. We get it. They're both trying to feel more present in real life. He says hanging out together always led them to unexpected places. And he tells a story about how they took a trip to Bora Bora that ended with the two of them taking mushrooms, getting on a boat, and climbing a mountain looking for a sacred banyan tree they saw on a map, which they found. And honestly, I'm sure I would be able to do a lot of unexpected shit with my girlfriend if I was fucking rich. Does that make me sound bitter? Of course I'm bitter. I want to be rich too. But like a cool rich, like Hassan Piker. MGK was glad she finally got to see him play live at a festival in Florida after pandemic restrictions eased up. It was year to do a year in a relationship where I was like, I swear to God I have a job. I swear to God I'm cool. You will see one of these days what I actually do. I hope the show she got to see is the one where he got booed by hundreds of Slipknot fans for making fun of them for wearing masks on stage. Like, sorry Kelly, not everyone can be in their 30s making corny pop punk music after their hip hop career derailed. I also like how Megan Fox comes across in this article like a goddamn poet where she's using like grand metaphors for everything. And then Machine Gun Kelly's over in the other corner like, I'm a motherfucking outlaw. Outlaw. Okay, I'm gonna talk about one more segment of this article. It was also featured in Megan Fox's Instagram page. Dude, reading this shit is gonna be the death of me. I I'm just now realizing I'm horrible at reading out loud. The tale of two outcasts and star-crossed lovers caught in the throes of a torrid solar flare of a romance featuring feverish obsession, guns, addiction, shamans, lots of blood, general mayhem, therapy, tantric night terrors, binding rituals, chakra sound baths, psychedelic hallucinations, organic smoothies, and the kind of sex that would make Lucifer clutch his rosary. Fuck yeah, dude. I, yo, dude, I fucking love sex. Yo, I relate. I love sex. I've totally had sex before. Do you believe me? Like, did Megan Fox just look up edgy things that kids think are cool on Google or some shit? I also really like the random inclusion of organic smoothies after all this dark shit. Murder. Violence. Blood. Rituals for Satan. Sleep paralysis demons. And kale smoothies. I love kale smoothies. They're so yummy. Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about. Sorry this is a shorter video. I just wanted to make fun of them for a little bit because this article fucking kills me. And if I sound bitter throughout this whole thing, it's because I am. I want to be rich. God damn it. Fuck!